If I haven't said it loud and straightforward enough, I just don't think Mark Russell is a very good comic book writer. And I think Marvel and DC Comics do their history and their publishing efforts at a service every time they put him on one of their characters. Mark Russell has a comic book coming out featuring Superman. I believe it's called Superman Space Age. $10 an issue. I don't want to be a fan of a comic book industry where anyone thinks that Mark Russell anything is worth $10 ever. But that is where we are, and he's doing the rounds. He's doing some interviews. He has Tom Taylor S takes on the Man of Steel. I rolled my eyes the entire time. There are few people in the world who get Superman less than Mark Russell. It's not about Superman. It's about getting Mark Russell's opinions and points across using Superman. He also had some really bad takes on Batman and Hal Jordan that I'm going to cover. But these are from two separate interviews, one from Adventures in Poor Taste, the other, I believe, from CBR. And what's really weird, this is something I won't get into, but I don't even know when the story is happening. During the CBR interview, it specifically stated Superman Space Age comes after Superman and the Authority in DC New Frontier. Superman and the Authority was a recent miniseries from Grant Morrison that led essentially directly into action comics. So is this thing in continuity? DC Comics is so messed up, I don't even know at this point. And after reading this interview, I don't care because I won't be covering it unless the comic book is just so bad that it warrants a roast or something like that. But today I am going to cover the interviews. I'm going to talk about the Adventures in Poor Taste interview first, where he specifically covers his stupid takes on Superman. And then I'm going to hit the CBR interview where he makes an ass of himself with Batman and Green Lantern and Hal Jordan. This interview is all over the place. But the first question I'm going to cover, AIPT asks him, do you have to engage with that idea that basic human rights and decency are somehow a political issue? Or is that for the reader to grapple with? And this is what the wise men, the sage himself, Mark Russell, had to say. Well, I think it's worth the reader to grapple with to what extent they find the issues political. What I wanted to do with Superman is he's this guy who does not have the luxury of sitting on the sidelines. He has too much power or there's too much trouble in the world. He's got to make decisions and as long airs on the side protecting those who need protections and in respecting people's humanity, then I think that's what lies at the base of his character. And if anyone finds that political or controversial, I really think that's on them. The key statement in there is that Superman can't afford to sit on the sidelines because he's so powerful. That is a fatal, fatal misunderstanding for a comic book writer about the character of Superman, especially if they're doing a Superman comic. Superman fights for what's right. He fights for truth, justice, and the American way. If someone is in danger, Superman will intervene. If the world is going to end, Superman will be there to protect it. But when it comes to policies and the way people treat each other, he has to sit on the sidelines because he's too powerful. Superman Clark Kent can't afford to inject himself into every political debate or social conversation going on in the world. First off, he's far too important and he's got bigger things on his mind. But second off, if he actually did intervene and he did decide to use his powers to make people believe the things that he thought were important, and if they didn't, you know, make them come to his side, he would be a tyrant. This is one of the big mistakes that Tom Taylor has made with John Kenneth Superman, one of the reasons that it hasn't worked. And it's an enormous misunderstanding on the part of Mark Russell as to what Superman is, what he values, and how he realizes what his place in the world is. He's there to do good. He's there to help people. He's there to protect people. But he is not there to make people think the way that he wants them to think. He is not there to shame the citizens of the world when they may have a political stance that differs from his own personal one. And yes, I do believe Clark Kent Superman has personal political stances and whatnot. But he sits on the sideline specifically because he's too powerful. Otherwise, you get injustice where he basically takes over the world and becomes a dictator. That's why... Superman doesn't intervene on energy matters. That's why Superman doesn't waste his time worrying about the social and political stances of the day. He understands that people are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, even if that means that they disagree with him on a political stance, even if that means that they disagree with him on a social position. Fundamental misunderstanding on the part of Mark Russell. Now, this next answer I'm going to cover really isn't a terrible Superman take, but it does explain why Mark Russell can't stop injecting himself into stories and why he's kind of such a pussy. This is what he had to say. I definitely wanted the first volume, especially to be about our Superman does not come out fully formed as Superman, but how he's very much the product of the people in his lives. The implementers like his father, Jonathan and his mother, Martha, and perhaps most significantly Lois. The thing that ultimately allowed him to become Superman is his ability to understand that other people had viewpoints that were more informed than his own. 
that's probably his most important superpower. I personally find the viewpoint that Lois has had a bigger impact on Superman Clark Kent's view of the world, even bigger than his mother and father, like to be pretty laughable. That's that's pretty stupid take on the character. Clark Kent, when he meets Lois, isn't fully formed as a superhero, but he is fully formed when it comes to his principles and his morals. That all comes from his parents. But the more laughable take in there is the idea that Superman just waits around for a more informed viewpoint before he takes a stance and does what's right. That's a weak ass expression from somebody that depends on sensitivity readers. Superman Clark Kent is a reporter. He's an investigator. He's somebody that goes out there and actually fully informs himself through actually reading and researching the information that he wants to have an opinion on, like a lot of other smart people in the world. The most thoughtful, well-informed, empathetic people I've ever met in my life were all informed pretty much on their own. They went out there, they read the information that was available, and they came up with an opinion. And the fact that Mark Russell truly believes that Superman's superpower is that he doesn't have an opinion on something until he's had it validated by someone that he thinks is more informed than him really just shows you the gross misunderstanding and characterization of Superman. Why they keep giving this character, that is so important, not just to DC Comics, but just to comic books, and really what they're doing at Warner Discovery now. Why they keep putting this character in the hands of imbeciles, I'll never know. But he also has some really stupid opinions on Batman and Hal Jordan. Let's talk about what he had to say in CBR where he was talking about Superman Space Age, which apparently includes the two characters. First question. More than just Superman, Kennedy's death also inspires Bruce Wayne. How is it showing Bruce trying to save the world as himself before jumping into the fray as Batman? And this is what Mark Russell had to say. Batman, in a lot of ways, is the response to the world with the Kennedy assassination and the near miss with the Soviet Union in a nuclear exchange. It prompted him to go, I can't just assume life is going to be smooth sailing for a defense industry billionaire anymore. If I want this world to continue on, I might have to actually dive in and help it somehow. Does anyone here that actually likes Batman truly believes that the character would have been inspired by the Kennedy assassination to finally get off his ass and go out there and start saving people? Batman is one of the few characters at Marvel or DC that really has that origin put in place and it defines his action. It defines his purpose and why he does his mission the way he does it. I'm not trying to say or insinuate that the Kennedy assassination wasn't a big deal and it wasn't very impactful on the conscience and public sentiment at the time. My mom was alive when Kennedy was assassinated. She told me what it was like, what had happened, how she felt, and how it impacted her. And I get that because my mom wasn't somebody that was out there motivated by the death of her parents to go out there and achieve justice at any cost like the character of Batman. That's another one of the reasons why trying to shoehorn these fictional characters into these real world events it always kind of falls flat. And in the case of Mark Russell, who's not a very good comic book writer, who doesn't think about the characters, he only thinks about himself and his message that he wants to get over. That's why he ends up bending the characters and he gets them so wrong. He is like a parody of a comic book writer. What is wrong with DC Comics? What is wrong with their editorial staff that they don't want to hire people who love the characters, first of all, but second of all, really understand what makes them tick and how they interact with the universe that they're in. There's another bad take in that interview with CBR about Hal Jordan, one of my favorite characters. I thought this one was just absolutely stupid and really shows that Mark Russell, despite trying to talk about the 60s and the space age and the nuclear arms race and all that stuff, really has no idea what was actually happening at the time. Question, Hal Jordan plays a prominent role in this story even before he gets to Green Lantern Power Ring. What did you want to bring with him in Superman Space Age? This is what Mark Russell had to say. In a lot of ways, Hal Jordan represents the majority of people back then. He's my everyman because he has this very cold us versus them mentality where a nuclear showdown is inevitable. So he thinks we should be the ones to strike first, but he quickly realizes that he's got to grow up and hurry if the human race is to survive. I think that's the challenge to us all. In the 60s, with the nuclear standoff between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, but also now, we've got to be willing to shed our old paradigms and xenophobic way of thinking or we are condemning each other to death. The idea that every man during the 60s and 70s and 80s during the Cold War and the nuclear arms race ramp up was like, we should just really strike first, that would be the smart thing, is so ridiculous on its face, it's not even funny. People were scared shitless 
that we were going to go to World War III with the Soviet Union, and we were going to destroy and murder everybody on the face of the planet. Every school in America had fallout shelters. They had procedures in place just in case the nuclear siren went off on what the kids and the teachers and everyone was supposed to do. Because, yes, they did think it was inevitable, but nobody actually wanted it to happen. They were actually pretty scared about it. In fact, during my time in the military, I just happened to have worked at the Missile Warring Center, which was a remnant of this nuclear arms ramp up because we would want to know when the Soviet Union at the time had maybe done a preemptive nuclear strike on us. And I can tell you from everything I observed and all the things that I saw that had been in place, nobody actually wanted to do a nuclear strike. It was the last option available. If they did it, I guess we'll have to do it ourselves. In fact, it's very well documented that in Russia, there were some malfunctions. Essentially where I was working, but in Russia, like the same group of people, but it would have been in the 70s, I think. There was a malfunction of equipment in Russia that made it look like there was a preemptive nuclear strike from the U.S. The colonel that was in charge that should have notified the people in his chain of command so they could start their retaliatory nuclear strikes back on the U.S., never called his chain of command because he didn't want to believe it was true. He didn't want to be a part of starting World War III. So you can see that sentiment wasn't only here in the U.S., but it was in Russia as well. In fact, the reason World War III never happened and we didn't go to a nuclear war is because that colonel never did that. And you know what happened to him? They fired him because he didn't have the balls to do what was right when he had the indications that the Russians were being struck on first. Absolutely insane that Mark Russell has no idea about the public sentiment and the everyman attitude toward the Cuban Missile Crisis and how amazing it was that John F. Kennedy actually took the stance that he, he did because it was so dangerous that you could have a position with those capabilities where you couldn't have early detection. If you want an idea of what the public sentiment at the time was, what the people were really going for, do not read Superman Space Age. Number one, he has no idea about a good take on Superman. He does not get Superman whatsoever. He has no idea what makes Batman tick, and he has no idea what the public sentiment was at the time. Just terrible takes all around by Mark Russell. He's an enormous hack. I put him on the level of Tom King, but less talented. That's how little I think about Mark Russell as a comic book writer. These are not the only bad takes you will get on Superman. In fact, in my opinion, Superman Son of Kal-El number one makes a lot of the same mistakes that Mark Russell is alluding to in this interview. I actually did a video about it talking about how John Kent Superman wasn't a superhero. He was obviously going to be a tyrant, fully fleshed out in issue number one. You could see it coming because he wanted to impose his will on the public.